everyone. Thank you so much for finding this course, my course about collaboration and co-creation. What is this about? We want to connect the dots to grow your ideas. Those ideas that are in your mind, I know they are there, but maybe they have not had a chance yet to come out because you don't have the means and tools and team members that will help you make your ideas a reality. Where do those ideas come from? Where do we find those ideas? And yes, it's a starting point, of course, in our minds, in our uh, visionary minds. But as I already started to say, we need other people to help us make ideas a reality. We are actually born to be here on Earth to connect with others and to build solutions for the challenges that we have. So I believe that there is this triangle of connection, collaboration, and innovative thinking that needs to come together um, so that those ideas can have a big, big impact for the people uh, out there. Some ideas of the many, many ideas uh, from the teams that I have mentored and accompanied through on their journey, I would like to mention to you because when you say ideas, maybe you have something really big in mind. But ideas don't have to be big. Something like the Stairminator, which was a stair climbing shopping trolley, something that makes it easier for people who have to use the trolley to get their shopping home so they don't have to use all their power that they might not have anymore uh, to get this trolley up the stairs. Or a holiday planner, something uh, you and your friends already always had in mind so that you can more efficiently get together and plan your next vacation. Or a travel, a platform maybe that you have in mind that serves as a, as a marketplace, as a platform for like-minded people who come together um, exchanging their ideas or sharing a service or whatever it is that connects you with like-minded souls. It is really important that you have a concrete, practical, idea that is real for you, that you have seen come across maybe several times uh, around you in your context, in your communities, in your neighborhood, that you are relating everything we do together here. This is not theoretical. You're not doing anything that you could repeat like out of a book. This is something real and it's about the experience growing a very specific idea. Yes, technology is always in the center. We have just reached that age where technology is all around us. And I don't want to say anything about this being good or bad. It's just a fact in life that we have to deal with. But technology is like a knife tools can be used in a good way and in a bad way. If you imagine the knife being able to kill someone or being able to save someone to create uh, the food that you need, it's a tool we have to be able to put into the right place to use with our values and with a very specific intent. So what are we doing together and where is this triangle that I have created now in your mind of different forces and different networks and different kind of people coming together. And I want to give you some examples of such networks where you can meet like-minded people like you who are interested in growing their ideas. I've come across the Make Sense Network. It's actually a global movement by now. And this community, maybe even at home in the impact hubs, there are something like co-working spaces with a very specific intent to grow sustainable ideas. I would call those networks, and these are just two examples, 
intersections where people with creative ideas come together to create massive impact. Another kind of intersection are the so-called fuck-up nights. I don't know if you've come across this network, um, very um, interesting name, of course. It's a network that started in Mexico City. It was born several years ago out of the need to speak about what did not work in a project. Bring up those cases of failure that you can learn from. It has become an evening format where people come together and speak about projects that have failed, personal failure, all kinds of stories around failure and things that did not go the way it was planned. It's happening in many cities around the world and I'm the founder of the Basel chapter. I worked with more than 60 speakers on those stories that they have, but more so even those lessons that come out of these stories. And that's where we are connecting on a very profound level to other people with skills that are needed to help us grow our ideas. So I would like to ask you to come along on this ride. And it might mean that you have to get out of your comfort zone. We might want to do something together that you have not done ever before. But I'm here for you. And I'm here for opening the doors to very open and honest conversations so that we can actually get across those obstacles that always uh, stop us in wanting to grow our ideas or actually you know, taking those first steps to grow them. Now, thank you for your patience. I would like to tell you now who is this person asking you to come along on a ride that might even take you out of your comfort zone. I have always loved to work with a group of young people, engineers of different kind of disciplines. Here you can see me in my very, very first hackathon that happened in, in Milano, connected to lots of people of the Cisco Networking Academy network. And that's where I got ignited, where this collaboration and co-creation spirit actually becomes touchable. Since then, I've led and been with many, many um, teams and groups and programs that I've created. And you can see in the faces that the goal that I have here is actually to make you happy, to make you happy in all those efforts of collaboration and co-creation that you are going through. And occasionally, it's also working out really that somebody would be super happy. <laughs> so who is this person? My name is Jutta Jelic, and I've worked as an innovation consultant and business developer forever since I can think actually. I coach people, I mentor them actually, and I am the initiator and founder of the Fuck Up Nights Basel. You can see a couple of numbers here about me because in, in a business context, most of the time, it's all about your achievements and the things you have already created. So I put together some numbers for you here starting with uh, the biggest uh, failure in terms of losing economic value um, of euros that I've lost investing into ventures, the number of kilometers I've gone on my e-bike, entrepreneurial teams of young engineers that I worked with, or years of working for the University of Technology in Vienna, places I've lived and worked and taught 
And here, with all these numbers now maybe in your head, I want to right away leave you in that iceberg. This iceberg is something that I, that I will be using throughout the course again and again. Why do I do that? Because all of the topics we are coming across in our lives have a very visible part, the top part of that iceberg, and a big part that's actually under the waterline. And I think this is a very good picture in our minds so that we are always aware of that there's so many things, there is a big part and actually a bigger part than what's visible below the waterline. I would like us to use different kind of tools, tools that you might not have heard about um, that maybe make you feel uncomfortable because you don't know how they work. I would like to encourage you to not get scared away by you know, fancy names of tools. Let's just look into what they actually are. Everybody is cooking with water everywhere on this planet. So every tool is something we can learn from. It's taking a, maybe a couple of minutes, maybe half an hour or something to understand what the tool actually wants. But it's showing you one part of the pie. So I will be playing with you with different kinds of tools. And I want to make sure that you find that access to those different kind of tools and don't put them as an obstacle before you're learning. We will dive into all these topics that are unfamiliar and new to you. And we will use them for our goal, our goal to understand more of that pie from different angles and perspectives. So here are the five stops. Why do I speak about stops? Well, by now you have understood that we are talking about collaboration and co-creation here as a huge topic, right? It's a process, it's an ability. It's a competency that we all need because we have to be able to work together with other people. So how do you grasp that? How, how do you approach that even? Where do you start and where do you stop? That's how those five stops actually came to be. The most important topics from my experience that will help you understand as an essential pillar in the process of developing an idea, working with a team and developing the idea until the point where you actually go into finding a business model that allows you to sustainably introduce your idea as a product or service on the market. A quick sneak preview into those stops. Basis and foundation of everything is your team. So in the stop team, we will dive into so many topics around roles and responsibilities, skills, strengths and weaknesses of who you are, how to actually work together, all those processes that you need to set up to work in a team. And the questions you cannot avoid are those here that you see in this box here. This is a term that also I will be repeatedly using, the question you can't avoid. What are those questions? These are the questions you will be asked if you are presenting your idea to other people, to people you approach for maybe getting funding, for people you approach for looking for team members, you will have to explain your idea. And these are the questions that they will ask you. The questions around team are all about you as your team members. Why is your team special? Um, can you get this idea to the market? And, and why? What are your reasons for creating this idea? Are you actually willing to learn along the way? 
experienced people will uh, you know focus on this question because the journey to develop an idea into something that actually has an impact as a product or service on the market they know that it's a really really strenuous journey and you have to have this ability to learn along the way to adapt to integrate this is the center when you think about growing your idea in the stop idea we are actually really trying to zoom in onto your idea and try to find out what problem your idea actually solves why is it that your idea is needed in the world as a product or service and what do you actually need to do that to create and deliver that product here's where we are starting to talk about customers target markets your competition what is unique about you technology of course is in the center of how to create and deliver that idea as a product or service in the stock market we are diving now into the market as it says of course but more so the marketing and those principles actually that are standing behind marketing i am talking to you as an engineer as a techie as a person who is using technology to create impact and my experience you know having worked with more than 200 teams is that marketing is not really you know something engineers would like to even engage with i've even heard um the people saying that marketing is something evil i'm fully with you actually here from many viewpoints and perspectives but it is really really important as a sought after talent with technology skills that are really needed to, for our societies to understand those principles and to be able to choose and opt for an ethical business model an ethical way of connecting to your companies an ethical way to work and co-create with your customers to create an impact together this is the co-creation part that i'm talking about here and here's actually also where your ideas take shape they start to become a living object because you interact with other people ideas take shape because we connect we connect to the people who we serve to the people who need solutions to challenges that they have and who are those people that need the solution that you already have in your mind stop partner i love the stop partner the stop partnership because it's again about connecting to other organizations to partners that allow us to reach our goals faster because maybe they are already serving the same market that we can add an impactful solution to and here again we are coming to the point of complementing our skills aligning with goals in other organizations the aspect of agreements and systems and contracts that come out of that is something that is a, a really really important point that many many of the teams i worked with put up till all the way at the end but actually it's at the core and that's why this is my favorite stop and here is the golden discipline the stop business model now at some point we have to come to the conclusion of how are we going to making this work what is the engine that is driving us to actually create something sustainable 
And here I would like to point you to this word sustainable. It can mean so many things. The way I'm using it now, the context I want you to see when I'm talking about sustainable business models is something that you create on a long-term vision with a long-term perspective in mind, co-creating and collabor collaborating with your customers, with the people you are building this solution for. When you go out there and look for funding, for venture capital maybe even, these are the questions, of course, that will be on top of everyone's mind. How does your business model work? And does it translate into different contexts? And how long does this work? Or can other people just copy what you do? So here is the most important question that we have in the context of collaboration and co-creation. What we actually want to do practically, we want to make sure that everyone, including ourselves, are, is able to bring in, to contribute his or her personal best. Sounds easy, right? And we, of course, start into any collaboration, into any team with that goal to create something together. But it's not as easy as it seems. Maybe you already have memories in mind of teamwork that didn't go so well. And honestly speaking, there is a lot to learn from every memory we have about teamwork not working the way it was intended. It's about honest feedback. It's about speaking honestly to each other about what we want to create, how we want to get there, and how we actually communicate about those intentions and goals to other people. It's also about reflecting for ourselves. Before we know what to communicate to the outside, to other people, we also have to be clear for ourselves of where it is we want to go, why we are doing what we are doing, and how we want to achieve that. Only if we are clear for ourselves, we will also be able to communicate that to others. And this is a fact. Even if you have the best plans whatsoever, you've already had projects that you developed in teams. You will be able or you will not be able to do everything as planned. It's just impossible to plan everything ahead. This is just not how life works. And we will run into those emotions. You might feel that way even in the course. How do we get on at this point? So the first point is to realize that that's what's going to happen. Um, there is no way that we can avoid that. And then we will just hold on and give ourselves that space to feel those emotions until they have passed through us so that we can then come back to communicating in a clear way what actually has happened. It's about staying cool after you felt that tsunami that basically came over you and swept you under and in those moments, we just have to let that happen to be able to then twist it and turn it and look at it from all the different angles to find that lesson that we were supposed to learn in that argument, in that fuck up, in that failure or whatever it is, whatever it is you want to call it, if something doesn't work out the way as planned. So here are my recommendations, my advice of a few things that you could do to possibly avoid pitfalls or you know, communication that doesn't work as you intended it to. And I want to right away give you this booster here. You know, actually this is not something that we will ever you know, be able to get right. 
every teamwork, every you know new idea that you start to create in a in a group that becomes a team, it's new. It's not that you can say, okay, collaboration, co-creation, check off, I am done, I am perfect in this. This is not how it is. So we have to continue. This is a lifelong learning project, actually. And these recommendations are as much for me as they are for you, for anybody who is listening now. So being visual is a very, very important point that I'm always trying to um, remind myself of, making sure that what you actually explain to someone is understood in the same way you have intended it. Asking others is a you know, very easy one as a recommendation, but it sometimes doesn't feel you know, so easy to ask someone. You can see here an image of one of my programs where the participants went out on the street in a park and just asked people that walked by about their idea. And this is something that takes courage. But 100% of everybody uh, who did that came back with sparkling eyes and new um, insights and knowledge and had a great time to discuss their ideas with, with people that just, you know, would have walked along with you on the street. Sharing. Another very easy recommendation. Many times we do things with ourselves in our heads and we don't think it's worth sharing. But I would like to encourage you to to share as much as you can, even if you think it's not important. Because we somehow have a very uh, crooked relationship to what's important and what's not important. And in teams, you can just not, um, not communicate enough. Of course, there needs to be times where you know, not, you know, you are not talking all the time. That's clear as well. You know, we need time to to recharge and in peace as well. You know, we can't be like chattering all the time. But I hope you got the point what I meant here. If you have to decide to share something or not, rather go for for sharing your thoughts, leading to discussions, of course. Whatever way you can get to 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 work together, if it's in person or digitally. Always choose a discussion, choose the conversation, the dialogue, and maybe even the argument about a topic that you're right at this point working upon. Sharing and discussing is what's leading us to learn from each other. So we can lean on each other. We can use our strengths in the best combination the skills that you have in a team in the best way to serve this idea that wants to become alive. This is how we create connection. These experiences of learning from each other, of creating something together, is what are the building blocks of this connection, these individual relationships that we start to create while collaborating and co-creating. This is actually, you know, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into how this actually works on a psychological level, we first have to be aware and be able to stay in the attention, to be in the presence, connected with our attitude, our values that guide us to come to action points. And that's a constant, constantly turning combination and wheels that keep us in motion. It's really important to not only think of technology in terms of zeros and ones. Let the creativity, this other side of your brain, let that also come into play. Let the craziness come, come out. Let the fun um, show that let, let us have fun together 
in creating what we have in our minds. And I know this may sound like quite far-fetched for you at this point. Like I said, every small idea that you have of improving something for someone is worth developing. Many times in life, and this is from the time I was living and working in Japan, we don't really know if we should stop or go now. And I can tell you, I don't have an answer to this situation. I could not even imagine that such a situation would exist. What would you do? Would you go now or would you stop? Well, I can only tell you, I had to watch the other people, the other cars that were around me to understand if I was allowed to go or not. Many times, me, the crazy person, the person who is always interested in, in developing ideas, talking the whole night around the fireplace of how this can become a reality or crazy thought that might not ever become a product or service, but just talking about, about it with others would be the fun exercise for me to do. The crazy guy, this little donkey in the middle of all the cows. If you feel like that, I can completely understand and I'm there with you. So many times um, I felt exactly like that. But don't worry. This is okay. We can communicate even between species. We are able to do that. Take it with a grain of salt and just continue. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on your ideas. Here's me again. I told you it's about having fun collaborating and co-creating together. I really mean that. This course is set up for you to have fun, to find those elements that you enjoy, that empower you, that motivate you and inspire you to actually take those ideas that you have in your mind and. Uh, go on the quest to make them a reality. Thank you so much for having the courage to get into this topic, to start on this journey, to be aware that this is more an experience that a knowledge download. Thank you for getting the ball rolling. You are a hero already because so many of us don't dare to take their ideas to another step. Just like me, many times I think, well, maybe we can do that later. It's not worth it. There's so many things already that I'm following. There's all the requirements of my daily life. Let's put it up for later. Yes, we do have to select so that we can be not completely power ourselves out of all the energies that we have. But we need to keep the ball rolling. And it is actually a big, big, big motivation to do that together with other people. This is where this momentum starts to build. It is actually not only, you know, spending your energy on growing an idea, but receiving um, energy back from the people you work with, the people you talk to about your idea. It's actually a give and take. And I'm very much looking forward to go on that journey together with you. Thank you.